Hello, good morning, it's uh, Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com. Be sure to visit the website www.cfds.com for your trading needs. Alternatively, you can visit www.cfds.education to certainly learn more with regards to the educational side of things. Okay, this is a review of the uh, US markets uh, going into today's trading session, which is the 2nd November 2015. Okay, this morning the uh, Asian markets have been flushed very hard. And the uh, Nikkei is down almost uh, in excess of 2% uh, at this juncture. And we also have the uh, uh, Shanghai down almost 1.6 or 1.7%. That's been a combination of factors. Uh, number one, we had news with regards to the weekend about a, the Greek banks needing 14.4 billion in extra capital, uh, capital with a shortfall. Uh, we also have uh, uh, news regarding BP dropping its bid to claim back uh, hundreds of millions. We have Vodafone customer bank details going uh, astray. Uh, we had the White Valiant downgrade late Friday. Uh, we've had the Saudi rating cut uh, and also Chinese manufacturing data as well hurting sentiment. So a number of factors as you can see there that's causing the uh, markets to certainly go into a risk off mode. And and uh, with regards to Chinese uh, markets, we had. Um, with regards to Chinese markets, we had uh, a number of uh, weak economic data out of China over the weekend that also created a risk of tone and has sent the markets uh, lower overnight. Also, with regards to Japan, there has been a hint that there will be no additional easing, as, uh, as was the case last week, and those hopes certainly have been dashed. Now, as we all know, with regards to the Fed, there's no um, concept or, or expectations of any um, of, uh, of a lack of rate cuts this year. December certainly is back on the table. So a hawkish Fed certainly adds to the weakness or further weakness of uh, of the markets as well. So in general, okay, so that's causing a risk of tone, especially with regards to the late session on on, uh, on a Friday. Uh, we had the market sell off quite substantially, as you can see here. The pivot high, twenty ninety four. The neckline is at twenty eighty two. You're looking at a twenty seventy uh, sell off. Uh, next potential support is twenty sixty five. So certainly keep an eye out for that. Uh, with regards to US markets uh, and, and the actual weakness expected there. Okay, so we know that the Asian markets have obviously confirmed the weakness and given the late Friday weakness that we, we obviously uh, witnessed. Okay, now we did have weak data come out on uh, on a Friday as well in terms of GDP and growth, etc. And that certainly added to the uh, global growth uh, slowdown phase. Now let's have a look at the markets from a technical uh, picture, given the fact that we've got confirmation from Asia now that this market is certainly weak. Now, a weekly chart in the S&P basically uh, does confirm everything. You have a doji, and that generally indicates indecision and a reversal is, is, over, is certainly overdue. The daily chart is a rising contracting wedge pattern, so therefore weak. Now, you have an unfilled gap below at 2052, and that certainly seems a target on the S&P 500. Now, the 60-minute uh, chart of the S&P 500, you can see that we've broken out this rising wedge. You had this bull flag that certainly didn't materialize. It did move higher, but to a large extent, it was, it was negated and failed. As soon as we crack the 2074, which we already have on futures, we're currently 2071. So therefore, the next potential support zone you're looking at is 2060, and obviously gap fill at 2052. The 10 minute chart has a H&S formation, which I've already told you on the uh, S&P 500, and the target does seem to be 2070 on the H&S uh, uh, calculation. But you are looking at 2066 and potential 2062 and 2060 support on the S&P. Now the question you need to ask yourself is: Has the S&P been supported by the Russell? And, and the question is no, it has not been supported by the Russell, and uh, and it has not been confirmed by the Russell either, given the fact that the Russell is supposed to be a leading indicator, not a lagging one. Now the daily chart of the Russell, as you can see here, we, we've struggled level since. Okay, the market has failed really to even move higher on the IWM, even though we have put in a bullish engulfing candle. It really has hasn't materialized. Okay, 60-minute chart, you can see we pushed higher. We've had a failed bull flag again. It's a fake out. As you can see here, we did break out of the support zone. You can see we've come exactly right back down again. You have an unfilled gap below, and therefore you are seeing weakness confirmation on the Russell itself. And you can see here, it certainly is uh, and, and does remain weak. The IWN, uh, which is a small caps, you can also come get confirmation from there as well. Uh, with regards to the Russell, bear with me. I'll just show you that as well. You can see here, ever since we've come into gap fill, the, the Russell has failed to really propel higher. So again, a risk off tone. Now, <clears throat> the actual USD JPY as well, you can see here, I'm certainly moving lower. The yen certainly starting to strengthen as well. So no real um, overwhelming uh, reason uh, for the uh, the actual US markets to propel. Once we break this support zone here, then you are looking at further weakness 
on the downside. Now we can cross reference this market now with the Nasdaq. Okay, the Nasdaq on the daily chart, you can see ever since we've closed that gap, we've gone into a risk off mode. Given the fact that the Nikkei is down almost 400 points overnight, that certainly will not help the uh, the Nasdaq either. Now a 60 minute chart of the uh, the Nasdaq, you can see we had this uh, bullish channel and we've actually broken down the bullish channel. Now you're looking at support of 46.10 on the actual Nasdaq in terms of a sell off. And then obviously you have an unfilled gap below which the market certainly needs to or will attempt to close, okay? Now, the uh, the actual 10-minute <clears throat> chart of the Nasdaq as well, you'll see that you have certainly weakness. You've broken out this uh, bullish channel, and the market certainly has broken down. Next level of support you have is at 46.20 and uh, 46.10, okay? There's two areas of potential support on the, uh, the actual Nasdaq itself. <clears throat> Now the actual uh, semiconductors, okay, so semicons, you can see that ever since we've closed the gap, we've certainly have found weakness. The daily chart certainly is weak as well, given the fact that we've broken out this uptrend out of the East uh, Channel. Semicons, again, now starting to show weakness. You can see here, potential here for H&S. Your left shoulder here, obviously your head going in here, and any any, any move higher thrust style will certainly be reversed. Looking at the biotechs, again, biotechs certainly are showing weakness. We failed to really cook take advantage of this rally the 60 minute chart again shows a very similar pattern in terms of a hns formation you can see here we've failed on the higher highs and higher lows and we've made a lower high and now looking to potentially move lower support back at 3360 will be interesting and we'll see exactly how the market reacts there okay now with regards to the actual will show as well this is something that we can always cross verify daily chart certainly shows resistance 60 minute chart you can see we've fail to move higher again and uh, the move itself on the upside certainly has lost momentum as we've broken out of this uh, rising contracting wedge pattern again so the whole same same concept the bulk trend certainly is losing steam okay so you can see from the the nasdaq uh, you've seen from the s p now let's have a look at the market from the dow jones perspective the daily chart again this key diagonal trend line certainly has held the 60 minute chart itself at the moment you are i mean you can certainly argue that you still are in a, an uptrend to a large extent but this bull flag certainly has failed you we shall see how the market reacts when you get to this support zones here uh, and then obviously that will be the next support zone for the the, the actual dow jones itself cross ref uh, verifying that with the dow transportation you can see that we already have put in a potential top on the 60 minute chart the daily chart you can see uh, you've negated immediately so therefore the dow transports is not confirming any potential strength in the dow in, in essence unless you call it confirming weakness given the fact that you have this bear flag formation and the 60 minute chart you can clearly see that we have negated and you are looking at a potential hns formation again so your left shoulder is here your head and obviously your right shoulder and obviously down you go therefore you are looking at this risk off tone in the market okay so certainly a bias is certainly bearish at this juncture with regards to the uh, Dow transport. So overall, <clears throat> given the fact that we have a weakness in Shanghai, given the fact that we have a weakness in, in the Nikkei and it's held at 200 MA, is actually certainly falling and is actually weak as well. Given the fact that you look at the copper chart and you have this HS formation on copper, given the fact that you look at the price of crude oil and you are into resistance, if you look at your 60 minute chart, certainly are finding resistance and looking for a potential reversal. Therefore, you are uh, looking at dollar strength as well. If I look at the actual chart of the dollar, and you can see that we've certainly pulled back on the daily chart, but we are into potential support now as well, and looking to potentially close the gap up here. So again, the dollar itself is, is going to be very interesting, uh, given the fact that uh, December is certainly back on the table, and given the fact that the risk off tone in Asia, it will certainly help the dollar side of the equation certainly move, start to move higher. So again, all eyes on the dollar, and uh, we should see exactly how that uh, performs. Uh, but from my perspective, certainly you have closed the uh, the actual uh, h and target at 2070 on the S&P, but you certainly have further more uh, downside to go, given the fact that the Asian sessions were, were extremely bearish. Okay, And uh, a lot obviously depends on the actual Fed as well, obviously given the fact that it's very important this week in terms of the NFB. Uh, but given the fact that you have a weaker Asia session and weaker uh, Chinese news, so far it's uh, it's a risk off tone. And at 2070, again, like I said, first H&S target has potentially been met already on the S&P. But you do have further downside at 2066 and 2060, given the fact that Asian markets are obviously into a risk off tone. I think that's a wrap. Be sure to visit CFDs.com uh, for your trading needs. Goodbye now.